You know, Golden, I, I uh, tend to have an issue with this. I, I take too long to introduce my guests as far <laughs> as like what exactly you do. Yeah. Just because I get caught up in conversations and I really enjoy these. But MMA's homegirl. I fucking love that nickname. That's Thank dope. You. What is it that you do? I am the global marketing manager for the PFL, the Professional Fighters League. Love it. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That title's sick too, right? Uh, you <laughs> flex it or what? I mean, hey, you know, I earned it. So. Nah, I love yeah. that for sure. How'd you How'd you get into MMA? Ooh, boy. So as I look at your Austin 316, it's my goat. But, okay. Like my number one goat. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's Mine's is China. And okay. after after I tell you my journey, you you'll understand why. Okay, okay. Um, but but yeah. So as a kid, my family, uh, pro wrestling, kind of just brought us all together. Like that was that was the thing that we watched. And you know, guys like Ken Shamrock, like there was there was always this little MMA kind of tie there, right? And he mm-hmm. would always have these like like the Lions Den match or like these these matches that kind of themed on what back then was MMA, but it was still so new yeah. in America. Like, like martial arts is the oldest, you know, one of the oldest uh, art forms of, of physicality and like, you know, sports in the world. But what we know about all of them combined together, it's probably like as old as me, right? Like probably like 27 years old. I like, think that's definitely fair. Yeah. yeah like, like, I, I think it was... 93? 93 yeah. was the first, like, UFC and then, like, the, the Gracie yeah. just choking people. They're like, yeah. what the hell is this dude doing? Right. And then BJJ gets introduced, right. and before you know it, it's an explosion. Yeah, so um, always knew about it there, right? Like, always knew about it there. And then kind of slowly, like, mid-2000s, like, uh, we kind of just grew up, grew a little out of watching Strictly Pro Wrestling. And uh, I'm the youngest of three kids have two older brothers, perfect scenario for a young girl. Um, and they love watching The Ultimate Fighter. So I would always kind of be watching it and hinting at it. And it always just, I don't know why, but it just kind of captivated me. Cause it was just these cool stories. You see these crazy, like it's reality TV, but with combat and it was just so different and new. And so I was watching it, you know, like here and there then. And I think it was really when I saw, like we were talking about before we started this uh, podcast, uh, Gina Carano versus Cyborg uh, in Strike Force. Like when I saw that, I was like, "Yo, I'm in." Like I just immersed myself into it. So I just started watching MMA all day, every day, especially throughout the summers. I remember just one summer, I literally probably just watched Spike every single day, and all they would show. That's a throwback. Yeah, all they would show is tough. Uh, so I, I just loved it. So I, w- I was watching every promotion and just especially kind of just seeing more women get that platform. Like that was that was that pay-per-view, that Strike Force pay-per-view was the first time women. Headline. Ever, yeah, headline in MMA. And it was then that I kind of was like, hmm, like maybe maybe there's something I can do with this. You know, like maybe like I could like, you know, maybe maybe somehow after college like maybe i could find a job in that sport wow so from there you wanted to work in mma yeah yeah so up until that point uh you know i have caribbean parents so like when you have caribbean parents either you a doctor or a lawyer so i was on the lawyer route right um and and i was pre-law in college too but my college roommates were he was haitian and the other one was from jamaica yeah my family's from haiti yeah 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 Yeah, so i'm first gen um, so yeah, that was my thing. But from there, I, I was just, I was just so captivated with it. I was like, I, I want to figure out how to work in this business. And I always wanted to work. Like I was always kind of interested in marketing. It always seemed cool to me from a young age, like, cause it has this psychology aspect to it. Right. You have to figure out how to cater to different people's interests. Right. And catch and, their attention. Yeah. And like, even just the difference a word can make the difference a period can make in marketing is amazing. So I was new from there. Um, and in college, I had sports internships. It was never specific to MMA because there's no blueprint to get into MMA. You know, it's very different from football, basketball, these other traditional sports that have such a popularity in America where, you know, there's internship programs and there's, you know, all these different things. You work for a certain team and then from there you move up. Exactly. In MMA, it's like, I didn't find any of that. So 
it still didn't really seem like a possibility for me to break into the industry because I, I didn't see how. Um, and also I didn't see, you know, I didn't see anyone who looked like me doing what I wanted to do, right? Like I, like talk about women breaking in, but black women breaking in, black women breaking into MMA and the business side, I didn't see that. You know, when I'm looking on LinkedIn, I didn't see any of that. So it, I really just had to kind of make my own experience. And um, I just ended up, so I, you know, I went to college for pre-law, I graduated. Uh, my first job out of college was uh, a sales job at a SaaS startup, uh, like an ed tech startup. So I was doing that. Um, and at the same time, I'm like, you know, all right, like, this is not my end all be all. Like, I'm trying to break into sports. So it kind of became a mindset that, hey, like, maybe if I can't break into MMA, maybe I'll just, just get a job in sports in mm. general, right? And like, just figure out a marketing job in sports in general. So, you know, I, I was doing that sales job. And for the first year, you know, I'll be honest, I was making great money. I got great experience and I really learned how to sell a product, right? More importantly, sell a product that, I wasn't really invested in, right? I wasn't really passionate about it. It was kind of just a, a job that I knew would give me great experience and really get me in the door of, you know, a lot of different areas in marketing because a lot of marketing has to roll back to sales. Always thinking about what can generate revenue. But I knew it wasn't really for me. Um, and, you know, I, I went on this journey of, interviewing for different sports companies and I kept getting to the final round and and in these interviews it's like you know you're final round you're making in-depth presentations you're doing these big pitches it's a lot of work can't tell you how many times I got rejected every time you ask not enough experience not enough experience not enough experience and I got really depressed and down about it um, yeah, it's a, everyone has a breaking point at some yeah. point if you're hearing no constantly. Did you get the you're on our radar still? Oh, of course. Of course. It's like you're on our radar. You know, like, no, you're great. You're great. Like, you're just so creative and this and this ideas and all these things. And I'm like, all right, y'all probably stealing my ideas for, you know, your next pitches or whatever. But it's always like not enough experience. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to get experience if no one wants to give me a shot? Right. Like, it's like I feel like a lot of these big corporations they want to be young. They want to be cutting edge. They always want to say they hire young people, but like, they're not really trying to do that unless they see their competitor to the left do it, you know. So, um, I was on that journey, and it was it was just really tough. Like I said, I was like really depressed. I was like kind of like, damn, I can't even just get it on sports in general. Like, f like who knows when I'm gonna break into MMA? Like, it was just always something in the back of my head that I always was. Mind you, I'm watching fights every weekend. Like, this is just a part of my life, a part of my culture. Um, but still didn't figure out how. And going into the second year of that job, uh, you know, I, I started training boxing. I started picking up Muay Thai too, going to like this local gym in Brooklyn doing that. And I was feeling so good. And I was like, you know what? Like, people want me to get experience. I'm going to get my own experience. I'm going to get my own experience, but I'm going to do it in what I like to do. So... I just started, like I said, I had a lot of sports internships, you know, throughout college, working for different agencies. I never had a direct one degree connection to MMA, but I knew people who may have known people who maybe had a, a radio show, right? Or just different things like that. So I honestly just went through my LinkedIn, like went through my old emails and just started hitting people up and just being like, hey, like, you know, I'm trying to break into the sport. like. I really admire your work. Like, I, I just want to talk to you about your journey. Like, how did you break barriers, right, in what you did? And just started talking to people, and pretty much one thing led to another, and I started uh, writing, right? I started creating content editorial at first, and then later just more, you know, video and kind of curating photo shoots and stuff like that. But I started uh, working with this one platform called New York Fighting, and they were specific to fighters in the New York area, both uh, professional and amateur, and just started writing there. And that was kind of like my in mm -hmm. to immersing myself in the, the fight community local here in New York. Damn, that's dope. I love how persistent you were on not. Yeah, because it's like, and, and when I tell you, like, I, like 
And I'm so open to say that I was depressed during that time because I feel like people never really acknowledge, you know, like those moments. Like it, it sucked. It sucked. It be, it's like when you're in a friend group and I think also at the time I was – I was kind of building my support system, you know, and I was figuring out like, okay, like after college, right? All the friends you have in college, they're not gonna be all the friends you have in your real life. And you kind of see like different people's hustles, right? Like I, I wasn't satisfied with just a nine to five job. It just, it just didn't serve me. Like after that year, I was, I would, listen, I was living on Madison Ave in the city. Like I was, I was doing good by many people's standards, by my parents' standards, but for me, I wanted more. I wasn't satisfied with that. And, you know, it kind of was a transition of me starting to have friends and attract friends who were kind of on that same path of like, yo, I'm not satisfied with just a conventional, like, I want to try this path that hasn't been traveled yet. I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you're saying, that's why I've been pretty much keeping my mouth shut because yeah, I'm, we're in the same boat. Yeah. You know, like you, you're, you've gotten to, a situation now where you have like a dope title and you're with a company yeah but man that journey defines defies you like it's yeah. it's what made you and it's easy to get dude i've been depressed i talk about my 2018 being miserable because i was in a similar situation where i was going to be become a cop for nassau county and it's like a dope job it's like one of the the four or five highest paid law enforcements in the whole country wow and I got really far into the the examination process and the whole investigation process. And my parents were like super proud to tell people like, yo, he's going to be a cop. NYPD? Nah, for Nassau County. Oh, okay. You know, you go to family events and like your family's kind of lame in a way. As much as you love them, they're like, oh, what do you do? They don't really care. They just want to like be nosy. And it got to a point for me where... I started doing this about five and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, this is all I think about like all the time. Right. And I got depressed because I got disqualified from the police for a speeding ticket. I did a 70 and a 50 and I had to pay like retainer fees to get it overturned. And yo, it's hard to save money. Mm -hmm. Right. Even me when I was living at home and I had what my phone bill and my gym membership and WWE network were my only <laughs> expenses. So it got to a point where I was like, yo, I'm like really depressed. I'm giving away all this money. I had braces too. I had braces at 26, right? At your age, I had braces. Matt, awkward. You know what I mean? But I had to get it done because I had saved up some money. And I'm like, yo, I think one day I'm going to be in front of a camera. And I would like to have a nicer smile and feel more comfortable in front of a camera. Now there's not a camera where I'm not comfortable in front of. I don't know if that would have been the case if I never did that. Mm -hmm. So... It got to a point where I wouldn't have wanted to be my friend in 2018. And it was because I had all these things that were going on and, and getting denied, going to meetings with companies and going, venturing out on my own and getting an interview and whatnot and hearing the same stuff like, oh, you're great. You're this, you're that. But you just knew the butt was coming. And it got to a point where I would just be like, they're telling me nice shit. And I would just be like, all right, man, here it comes. Like, what is it? No experience. All right, cool. What is it? It's... uh you're still not comfortable in front of a camera. It's like, yeah, because I still got braces on. Like, that's why, you know, it just got to a point where I was just like, yo, I'm going to do it my own way, similar to you. Like, I'm going to carve out, I'm going to become undeniable. And that's like a word that I like using where people get caught up in follower counts and all this stuff. And I think it's very misleading. I think it's the body of work that sells. I've done over 1200 episodes. So, so when I package that to people, they're like, oh, there's consistency, there's dedication, there's a body of work, the 10,000 hour rule, like I've surpassed that. So that's the biggest appeal to people. And now the show's gotten to a point where like the downloads, every episode are very respectful. It's backed by a network. So now it's, I'm coming at you from a different place, but I'm telling you at the time where I was at, it was completely different. Right. So you knew you wanted to get in front of the camera to be more comfortable, but when did you know it was a podcast? that you wanted to start? Did, was it another form of content that you started with? So we, my friends and I started a blog back in like 2014. Mm. I don't like writing articles, dude. <laughs> like I could barely put tweets together. You want me writing <laughs> thousand word articles? So it was one of those, a, a, a poor, poor man's version of like a bar stool, right? Okay. It was what we were trying to do. 
And then we quickly realized that, like, oh, you, you can never be Barstool, right? Like, you just can't because they've already dominated that market. There's always going to be kids going into colleges, fraternities, sororities. They're going to be down with Barstool. That's their niche. That's what they're dominating. So I got to a point where, at the time, my buddy Joe, he's a big, like, YouTuber influencer. He's like, yo, I think podcasts are going to blow up. Like, there's, there's this new platform, podcasting. It's still relatively new. It was maybe five or six years old, but it was just starting to the Bill Simmons and the Rogans of the world were starting to pick up a lot of momentum. He's like, yo, let's start a podcast and talk sports. I'll be the host. And we got three other buddies. So that all started. And from day one, Golden, it became something where people liked me. Right. Like they liked the show. Don't get it twisted because the show was awesome. But, like, I was getting a lot of feedback, and then I started my own thing, like a sports betting show, and then that started doing well. And then it just got to a point where I saw the possibilities. Like, I'm a, I was a, I'm a big future thinker, but it's in the back of my mind. Where in the past, I used to worry so much about, like, yo, what's going to happen in five years, ten years? Like, yeah, yada, yada, yada. I got I to gotta have a kid. I got to have a house. I got to be married by X... And then I realized, like, yo, you're letting your life pass by you by not living in the now. So I got to a point where I was just like, yo, if I just do the work, like my pops told me one time, like, yo, nothing bad happens to someone that works hard. Facts. And it just resonated with me. Like, dude, whatever you want to do, if you just work hard at it, eventually it's going to be discovered. Perseverance. And... That's what it was to answer your question about like the podcasting. I didn't know that I'd be doing this at all. I I knew one thing for sure. I love I love sports. It's probably the one thing that defines me the most. And I like all kind of sports, like all sports I'm into. And then I was able to carve up my own lane and get into the whole world of podcasting. And then from there, it's like, oh, you do a pod, you do the audio. All right, let's fire up some cameras. Now you have two pieces of content. You cut it up into different segments. Now you have three pieces of content. Before you know it, you have both visual and audio. Mm -hmm. So it's just like evolving with the times. Now I'm adding subtitles to my videos. Because uh, that's like the yeah. new thing that everyone likes to do. Yeah, got to have that. It's just adding more, you know. And I've learned how to do all this on my own. Right. You know, I didn't go to school for any of this stuff. Just YouTube University. That's, yeah. uh, that's where I got my master's I mean, degree from. Like I said, no blueprint, right? There was no blueprint for you to break into. Like like I said, like I went, I literally wrote, I, I took a million law classes in college. Like all I did was like write papers. That's it. I didn't, I did not go to school for marketing whatsoever. So um, I forget where, we're, where we were uh, on this story of mine. I was, I started writing. Yeah. Right, the yeah. writing part, yeah. yeah so for, was, for the New York fighting. Yeah, so for New York fighting, um, and that's when I started going to fights, right? So I started, you know, they would, the, the editors there, they would kind of, you know, give me options of, you know, hey, these fights are coming up, like, you know, who on this card would you want to interview? What kind of promotions? Like regional ones? Both, both. Oh, nice. So both regional and um, and uh, uh, professional. I have a very soft spot for CFFC. Yeah. Yeah, because um, my buddy Jared Gordon actually Jared fights. Gordon. Yeah, 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 he fights this weekend. At the time that the pod goes out, it would have been over the weekend. So hopefully, <laughs> Jared brings home the W. Big fight for him. But he fought in the CFFC. My buddy Sergio, uh, rest in peace, Sergio. He just passed away a couple months ago. He fought in CFFC also. Then he went and fought in Bellator. Jared's now in the UFC. Um, I know Paul Felder through Jared and some mm -hmm. of the guys, and they actually have one of the better. Um, I don't want to call it a farm system because I feel like you're doing it a disservice, but there's a lot of guys from CFFC that end up going to uh, Bellator, PFL, big, big name promotions after. Yeah. So it's one of the bigger, I guess, like ECW promotions <laughs> of MMA, whereas like you have WCW and WWE would be like the Bellator's PFL UFC. Yeah, like the feeder, the feeder. Feeder, the feeder there you go. Yeah, what I call it, call it, a farm system? <laughs> yeah, you farm system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm using the baseball term there. 